Well, good morning. It is Monday of Holy Week. Today we read the text for Monday, which is John 12, 1 through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he'd raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you. You do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he'd raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. This is an interesting passage um, for several reasons that we'll look at. Uh, It's also a passage that's caused a big stir in biblical studies in the last couple of years. Um, There's a woman who... uh, I think teaches right now at Villanova, who looked at an early manuscript of John, one of the oldest that we have, and found evidence that it's been changed and that um, Martha's name has been added and Mary has been sort of demoted a little bit. So that was that's kind of interesting, mostly because in some of these uh, texts, um, Mary is the one who makes the the confession, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And that was Peter's confession, you see. And so we have to change it. And then in the sixth century, the Pope Gregory the Great preached a sermon in which he said that, well, this Mary obviously was a prostitute and shouldn't be trusted. And so Mary's reputation has been deliberately um, obscured and denied over the over the centuries. But we'll leave all that aside, okay? But there's something for you to think about there. Um, Judas complains, we should have given this money to the poor, which brings up, you know, this whole notion of helping the poor versus doing something for, for us. And uh, I have had that conversation in so many session meetings, they all run together, where somebody will say, let's do this, and somebody else will say, oh, no, we can't do that. We can't put new carpet in the sanctuary. No, we need to keep uh, the money for the poor. And then when you say, well, let's give the money to the poor, well, they only want to give them $20 at a time. It doesn't really even help them, but it's another story. So... um, Judas is saying this mostly because, as John points out, uh, he's a, he steals from the purse. Um, and Jesus says, well, leave her alone. Leave her alone. This is good. She's doing a good thing for me, and she's preparing me for burial. And anyway, you'll always have the poor. You won't always have me. And that's the second thing I want to bring up, that that comment has been used so many times to excuse not doing anything for the poor. Well, we'll always have the poor. They'll always be poor. What can we do? Well, we can help them. Um, they will always, there will always be poor people, and there won't always be Jesus sitting there at the table. That's his point. But uh, you can help the poor later, perhaps, he's saying. Um and then, of course, the Jews come, the, the officials, the, the priests and the, some of the Pharisees, and they, they're looking for a reason to kill Jesus. And the fact that he's um, raising, ha, has raised Lazarus from the dead is one of those reasons. And the fact that a lot of Jews are coming out and seeing Lazarus alive or starting to believe in Jesus, and that adds to 
this um, animosity that they have. Now, it's not all Jews everywhere. Don't get all anti-Semit, anti-Semite on us. It's, it's some Jews in Jerusalem at that time who had positions of power. So the powerful leaders wanted Jesus dead because he threatened them. Just his existence threatened their, their uh, security and safety and the power structure that they had. They, they didn't want the rival. So they want to kill Jesus. Um, so, and this is the day before the, the uh, Palm Sunday. So this is actually, you know, we would say Saturday night. Um, but that's the text for today. And if you keep reading, you'll read the Palm Sunday story in John's version. And, uh, and it ends with the Pharisees saying to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. And so they realize this is out of control. Everybody is following him now. What can we do? So um, for, for today, look at, look at this passage and imagine this woman pouring, you know, a, obscenely expensive um, uh, thing of perfume, some sort of some sort of ointment all over Jesus' nasty, dirty feet and wiping them with her hair, um, which is a, um, a symbol of devotion and a symbol of of her her love for him and also in a way prepares him for burial because he knows he's going to be, uh, killed in a couple of days, a few days, and um, and and will need this kind of treatment before he's finally buried, and she 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 does that in a sort of symbolic way. So uh, that's today's uh, look at what Jesus is up to. Have a great week, and we will see you tomorrow.